Now to Uvalde, Texas tonight, where a vigil took place honoring the 19 children and two teachers killed in yesterday's school shooting. Among them, a fourth grader full of life and energy, a 10-year-old who loved football and video games, a little girl who wanted to go to law school just like her mom, and teachers who put themselves in harm's way trying to protect their students. This is enough. This is enough. No one else needs to go through this. We never needed to go through this, but we are. Tonight, we are getting a heartbreaking glimpse into the pain these families felt as they discovered their loved ones were not coming home. One father posting online yesterday saying, it's been seven hours and I still haven't heard anything. Please help me find my daughter. Then this morning posting, she's been found. My little love is now flying high with the angels above. She was the sweetest little girl who did nothing wrong. She listened to her mom and dad. She always brushed her teeth. She, did, she was creative. She made things for us. She never got in trouble in school. Like, I just want to know what she did to be a victim. Our hearts are breaking for these families. And as they grieve tonight, investigators are now releasing new details about the gunman now saying he was inside that school for up to an hour before police finally forced their way into the classroom and killed him. We also learned tonight he told at least one other person about his plans. New text messages from the shooter's phone reveal messages sent to a teen in Germany just moments before the start of that deadly rampage. In those messages, he told the girl he shot his grandmother, then says he's going to shoot up an elementary school. The gunman's Instagram account also showed photos of two AR-style weapons bought just days ago. And posts on Facebook detailed his plans to shoot his grandmother and then target a school just minutes before. During these attacks, school resource officers are often the first line of defense to keep their students safe. This is a responsibility local officers tell us they don't take lightly. Every day when Officer Richard Craig walks into school, he's prepared for the unthinkable. You have to prepare for the what if. A lot of times we are the first responders as an SRO. It's something school resource officers constantly train for, but hope to never experience. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for Rob Elementary in Uvalde, a tragedy Officer Craig first learned about while finishing his day at Avon High School. You envision your own kids. You envision the students that you know being you know, afraid and in fear and in, in those type of situations. A situation Officer Craig wishes he never had to worry about, but ultimately it's the purpose of his job. You have to be prepared to respond to that. So you go quickly from being a mentor, a teacher, a counselor um, to that first responder where you're running towards the threat. And he's ready to do that for any of the district's 10,000 students. I look at your child and I'm going to treat your child as I would my own. And I'm going to take care of your child as I would my own. And, and if that means putting their safety in front of my own, that's what I'm here to do. Part of that job also means talking to students about the difficult news, something he did on TikTok Tuesday night. It, this, this is, this is absolutely terrifying. During that conversation, Officer Craig also reminded students to speak up. If you see something, say something. Tell a trusted adult, tell a teacher, tell an administrator, tell your SRO. If, if something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. Let, an, let a trusted adult know. As much as SROs are there to support students, they are also the school's first line of defense. Four years ago today, we saw a school shooting in our own backyard. A student opened fire at Noblesville West Middle School. The gunman shot classmate Ella Whistler and teacher Jason Seaman before Seaman tackled the boy to the ground. Today, Jason sat down with us, sharing his frustration in the wake of this latest school shooting. Unfortunately, it's a here we go again, and it goes back to the point of what are we doing to proactively get ahead of this thing. What really frustrates me is that that seems to be the trigger for people to fight and point fingers on various platforms. Um, but then not a lot is changing 
in a progressive way in our legislation and uh, the people who can actually impact the change. It's a puzzle, so you have to take the human element and you have to have uh, the firearm element and you have to have the mental health element and that takes people in the know, specialists from each one coming together to make a compromise so that schools can get back to being a place where the kids go to be safe mentally, physically, all those ways and we don't have to have that thought in the back of our mind, oh, is this going to happen today? While the country is overwhelmingly united by grief, we're already starting to see the divide over how to prevent future mass shootings. Just today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott and Democratic candidate for Governor Beto O'Rourke shared a tense exchange. When it comes to actual legislation, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he doesn't want to rush a vote with the hope lawmakers can find common ground. When they return in June, House Democrats plan to push for a vote on a national red flag law. Indiana already has one on the books, allowing police to temporarily confiscate guns from people who pose a threat to themselves or others.